Hey guys, Dom here, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm gonna talk about wedges for through wedge mortise and tenons, and how I make them and the jig that I use to do that. Now, through wedge mortise and tenons is a joinery technique that I really love and that I find I'm using quite often. Uh, I initially used through wedge mortise and tenons when I made a post and beam garage addition for my shop. Uh, and also when I was making big barn doors and some folding doors for that exterior build where I wanted the maximum mechanical rigidity in those joints to prevent sagging uh, and where I really wanted to not have to rely exclusively on the glue holding up over time so they were draw board and wedged. Uh, subsequently I have started using that technique for smaller scale furniture joinery as well and I like both the function that it provides, that extra rigidity and also even the aesthetic look of that joinery. Uh, the method that I use uh, is this jig and a hand plane. Uh, it isn't the fastest method, so the people out there that are screaming right now at me, why wouldn't you use a bandsaw? Why wouldn't you use a sled or a piece of notched wood on the bandsaw to make wedges? Completely agree with you, that method is probably faster. Well, it is faster um, and just as effective, I'm sure. But I like this method, I like switching off my dust collector and the noise of machines whenever I get a chance or any excuse and using a hand plane or a hand tool to do a process. I find it cathartic and making wedges with this method that I'm going to show you is still very quick and it's repeatable and effective. So if you don't mind spending an extra two minutes on a build to pump out 20 or 30 wedges uh, and you like using a hand plane or maybe you don't even have a bandsaw, this method might be for you. All right, so first up, here's a little clip of the jig in action. I have sped up the planing by one and a half times to cater to those of you with the attention span of a small hamster, but it's still very quick. Uh, once you've planed the wedges down, sharpen the tips with your chisel to make it easy to insert the wedges into the narrow gaps in your tenon. The last thing you want to be doing is struggling with that mid glue up when everything else is already going wrong. To make the actual jig itself, start by milling a piece of wood of about a meter in length uh, to at least twice the thickness of your typical tenon so that you can make two wedges at once. Uh, in my case, I typically make either quarter inch or five sixteenth or around eight millimeter wedges. So I've machined my piece of timber to about 18 millimeters. Cut that strip into three equal length pieces of about 25 to 30 centimeters. And then once you've done that, you'll have to cut a strip off one of those pieces. But Dom, you told me I didn't need a bandsaw. You don't need a bandsaw, do it with whichever tool you prefer. That strip that you cut off has to be at least thicker than the base height of your wedge. In my case, the base of the wedge will be about six millimeters. So I've arbitrarily cut my strip about 10 or 12 millimeters. As long as it's bigger, it doesn't matter because you will be cutting off the excess. You'll have to decide on the length of your wedge. In my case, I like to go with 50 millimeters. It's a good length to cover most furniture joinery. And then you'll also have to decide on the angle of your wedge. And I recommend one in 10 gradient or six degrees. It just makes it easy then to map out the flare in your mortise for a given depth or length of split in your tenon. Mark that angle and that 50 millimeter distance on your pieces, uh, making sure to get the orientation right on the angle on both the side pieces. Uh, and that'll provide a reference line for when you glue the center piece in between those two side pieces. Glue those in, make sure the two side pieces are coplanar and square to each other. And then also glue in the two strips, uh, lining them up with your 50 millimeter lines for the distance or the length of your wedge. Once you've pulled that out of clamps, simply cut off and plane off the excess to make a nice flush top and bottom surface. And then you're ready to make wedges. It's that simple. It shouldn't take you more than 30 or 40 minutes to make this jig. Uh, and then basically mill up your stock for your wedges so that in one dimension, uh, it is exactly the width of your tenon. And in the other dimension, it just has to be slightly bigger than your wedge or thicker than your wedge. Put the stock into your jig, plane it flush, and you've got a wedge 
All you have to do then is just sharpen the tip. As I mentioned earlier, it just really helps with getting that uh, wedge into your tenon. Now, the other thing to discuss quickly is obviously your uh, putting your wedge into your tenon, which is going to flare the tenon. You have to also uh, angle your mortise for the at least the back half of the mortise. So in this case, I've got a 40 millimeter split on my tenon, which I'll be driving the wedge into, which means with a one in 10 gradient, it'll be expanding the tenon up to four millimeters. Now, you don't want to cut four millimeters out of your mortise uh, at the back edge because you want to allow one, some extra room for your saw curve, and two, when you drive those wedges in, you want to make sure that it's really compressing the, the tenon, the fibers, uh, by the time it's driven home so that you have a really nice tight joint. And that's it guys. Uh, I hope you enjoy making wedges using this method uh, and uh, have fun. Mm. Love these wedges. Still here? What are you doing? Go make some wedges. Mm.